Hello everyone, and in this video I'm going to show you how I've created a step for our bathtub. So my wife's short, and this is a deep tub, so as she tries to get in, she'd scrape her legs on the sides. And so I've built this little bathtub step, and I'm going to show you the process of how I did that. And as always, if you don't like my video, then go make your own. So here's a before shot, and you'll see as I go through this process, I make quite a lot of mistakes, but this is something I'm just doing off the top of my head. And I'll show you my experience so that if you do the same, you'll have a better time. So this is what I have so far. I have the first part of my step. This is the design that I came up with. I'm going to have a six inch from the tub step, and then it's going to round in the front. And what I've done is I've added these little blocks inside. And what I'll do, at least what I'm going to try to do, is drill a hole in here and there as well. And then in the last one, and I will drill a hole in the tile, but not all the way through into the subfloor, just a hole in the tile. And then once I have my hole in my tile in the right place, of course, I'll drill a screw or maybe a lag bolt into the floor and then have a washer here to keep it secure. And of course, on the bottom of the step, I will load it up with some liquid nails just to make it become really solid on the floor. And next would come the upper part of the stair. All right, I've built an almost identical piece. I don't have the um, slots in it yet, but this is only gonna be about seven inches high because the two by fours are three and a half inches wide. So this is about seven inches tall, and I wanna make it about nine inches tall. So I'm going to add some little spacers on the inside to lift this up to be the correct height. And of course I will level it, but I have two identical blocks at this moment. And the width of it is just what I kind of thought would aesthetically look nice. Um, it's about 10 inches on each side um, away from the full size of the tub, which is about nine feet, I believe. So I have this step, and of course the rounded edge piece will come down here as well. And I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do with that just yet, but I will keep you updated. So this is my current idea, is to have some of these taller boards on the inside of the step, and I would mount them. We'll just drill screws right into the side to get in there to give my height the right space. And then I would, hold on, let me get my spacers. Have some of these kinds of blocks down along in the center to kind of space it up. And of course I would cut these to the right height so that this would be just under my target of nine inches because I'm going to add particle board over top so that the tile can easily stick to the particle board. And I'll use that same particle board, I think, to make my rounded edge as well. But I don't want to assemble this just yet because I still need to screw into the tile and I can't do that very well if it's all assembled. So I think I will um, as assemble this first and then drill these in from the bottom. And then when I'm ready, drop the top on and make it level. Okay, so here's the steps that I have, just all disassembled. And I took the time to cut a little template. It's the same width, and it comes out the, what I've decided at least, the six inches, which is the edge of my template there. And then there will be a rounded edge like so that I will build on. So this is just a rough template, but I'm hoping that I can bend my particle board enough to not break it, but then wrap the edges like that so that the tile can have a nice, smooth surface to adhere to. Now, before I head upstairs and drill into the tile and ruin the tile, just in case my design isn't a good design here, I thought I would make sure I know what I'm going to do to make the, red, the rounded edge. So I decided to take a block, which is about the height of what I'm going to make this step. I decided to do it about eight and a half inches so that when the particle board I have on top and then the tile will make it about nine inches 
And so I was thinking of making a, or putting a block about the set height in the middle, and then that's about the distance away that I want the curve to be in the center. And then I was going to cut the, the this little vertical piece, the edges off, so that I just have one little single, only as wide as a screw point, so that from the outside, the particle board, I would screw into this as my center, and then wrap it all the way around to the corner here, which is only six inches. So that would be six plus three and a half, so that'd be about nine and a half from the um, outside to the edge. I might wanna go a little further than that. I'll have to figure that out. But then the particle board would come and wrap around here and get to the edge. And then somehow I need to figure out how to secure that side of the particle board over here. I don't know if I need a spacer there um, I'm going to have the top piece as well on top. So somehow I need to have a wedge cut at a certain angle maybe to have it here, but I haven't figured that part out, but I need to figure out before I actually go and install this step where I think I'll be in big trouble. Directly center, if I had just a two by four, my foot would hang off the edge of the step. And so I'm thinking I need to make this a two by six instead of a two by four so that at least when you step in the middle of the step, your foot's not hanging off the edge of the step at all. I brought my cardboard cutout template upstairs and set it next to the tub to get an idea of how wide the step should probably be. So it doesn't seem like it's impeding too much on this area if the step was here. Now, based on my cutout of this template, I need to make that center part, if I can do this left-handed, about 12 and a half inches out. And that would be just plenty of room for my foot to sit show. And my wife's feet are even a little smaller, so that would be perfect. I might even go a little bit more narrow than that. So we're looking about 12 inches plus um, particle board and tire, or tile. Should be about that 12 and a half inches out. So I found a scrap piece of two by six, and if I use that, I come out to about 11 and a fourth. So if I add about a half inch for the particle board plus the tile on the edge, that puts us about 11 and um, three quarters or 11.75. So that should probably be just fine for my step without having to try to whittle down pieces of wood. But you can see if I step on here with my shoe, I have plenty of room on the edge and that's just directly in the center of course because it will round on the edges there. I think that should be a good size for a step. So I'll go to and get some two by sixes for my center pieces. I found a piece of two by eight that I had and I cut it to about eight and a half inches tall and I cut it down to only be about five and a half inches. And that way with the particle board and the tile, we should be at about 12 inches out from the tub. So what I'm gonna do now is knock the corners off here enough that I can put a screw in the middle, and that way the rounded edge should not be affected by the thickness of this board. So I just kind of knock these corners off at a 45 degree angle with my miter saw. Okay, so here's my new middle piece, eight and a half inches tall, and I cut the angles at a 45 degree so that there's enough to get a screw in directly in the middle. And when that's sat in the middle here, my particle board will start and then curve to the edge over there and then curve back over to here. For my middle piece, I used my Craig jig to drill some pocket holes on the side. So it will run for the top beam and the bottom beam. And I have pre-marked the step where the direct center is. So I'm going to line this up directly in the middle. And then using my pocket hole screws, I'm going to attach directly to the step. I successfully drilled in some two and a half inch long pocket hole um, screws through the holes that I drilled here. Now that's attached very, very firmly. I'm, I love pocket hole. They are so secure. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a test here. Just standing up right in the middle. Put my full weight on it and it doesn't budge left to right, up and down, one bit. It's nice and sturdy. So next I will try to cut my piece of 
plywood or particle board, whichever one I choose to use. I bought some extra six foot two by fours for this project. And I'm gonna use them to lay this down on the ground so I can cut it just directly on the floor since I don't have a table big enough for this piece of wood here. So it's only about a half inch thick, I think. Maybe a quarter inch, I don't remember, but it's thin enough that I hope that it will bend around the edge of the step. So I'm measuring in from the outside eight and a half inches because that's how tall my wood part of my step is going to be. And I happen to have this nice long straight piece of wood that was actually the exact same length that I needed. So I'm going to just draw my straight line and then start cutting. Always nice to have some clamps hanging around so I can make sure this line is nice and straight. So it's very handy to have these in your shop if you don't. I've actually decided to leave this piece of wood on here and use it as a guide for my circular saw as I go along. So I have the line drawn just in case, but I should be able to ride my saw right up against this and cut my straight line. Now I've made sure to move the two by fours out of the way underneath so I don't have any complications with that. To make sure that the depth of the blade doesn't go too far down and contact the concrete. So we look pretty good right there if I use one of that block as my guide. And there you go, I have my wood piece cut. And now I'm going to mount it to the center of that and wrap the wood around the edge. And I'll try to figure out how I'm going to mount it on the corners of the step. Well, it doesn't look as flexible as I had hoped. It has snapped in the center. I tried to lightly brace it on that side to curve it around to this side and well, it snapped dead center. Darn. Okay, so I went over to Lowe's and I picked up some MDF. It was also an MDF particle board kind of material. And I started doing what's called kerfing. So I'm cutting into the wood, not all the way through, just to give it a little bit more pliability because clearly last time my wood just broke right in half. So already you can see the bendability and curvability of just what I've done just here. So I'm just gonna continue making those cuts and I think that should work great. So what I've been doing is just lining up the front of my saw and following the line as I go along. And so I don't make sure exactly what thickness that is, but it seems to be working very well. So MDF is better quality as far as the material, it's more dense than particle board um, and it's made a little bit differently. And so far this seems like this is going to be the best way to go in trying to curve that step piece. Just as temporary, I put in a screw on an angle so that this will line up so that I can draw on a piece of paper what angle this is supposed to be cut at because I want to put in a little support piece that comes up to the top. But I want it to go on the inside, but I need to know what that is. So for now, drilling in the screw on an angle. I'm also, because my board here is a little too short and I didn't want to have to cut another one and go through the process of doing the kerning again, I'm going to take the miter saw and I'm going to just slice this edge off so that I'm just a little bit short. So that's my next steps. I went ahead and cut these spacer pieces that will lift the top box to the correct height to meet up with this center piece, which should be about eight and a half inches. And so this piece will just sit right on top of there and then I'll figure out a way to secure it to the top thinking about putting two by fours on the side of this and then screwing into the bottom and then into the top box since it's on there. But I'm going to have to take this inside and start installing it because I'm not gonna be able to take it apart and drill into the tile if I have the um, step fully assembled. Before I take this upstairs and start installing the bottom, I want to get this side figured out too with this angle. So I have this little ruler that um, gives me the angle. I just got this at Home Depot or Lowe's. And it's telling me that the angle I need is about that 11.73. So I can even tighten this and then take it over to my miter saw and make sure I get that correct angle. I'm gonna cut the angle first before I cut the width, just cause I can always slice off the width no problem. 
So I've come over to my miter saw and I've used this angle ruler to mark the angle that I want to cut. I'm trying to utilize as much of this um, solid piece as I can without having to try to cut another one at this same height. I'm just using my extra pieces. So with my miter saw, it's a Ryobi, I have a laser on it, which does come in handy for this kind of thing. So if I tilt my saw down, I can match the angle, at least as close as I possibly can, to the angle that I drew. That's pretty close, but I need to put the phone down to make this cut, just to make sure I do have the correct angle. But that's what's really nice about this particular miter saw, is this little red laser for sure. So I have my side plates cut with the correct angle, which I got from that angle ruler that I have. Yeah, both sides, and it's pretty dang close. I mean, I'm gonna tile over this, of course, but I don't think I can get much closer than what I just did. So I'm a little proud of myself with this bend and being able to have these side pieces meet correctly. This top piece will need a little bit of work, need a little bit of leveling and things, but I will get to that when I get to that. So I wanted to get the top piece cut for the step. So I've laid my step so far upside down to get the top piece measurement. And so I've just drawn a line around where I can go along with my saw and cut out my top piece. So I decided to flip this um, to the top and I um, put this on the bottom and I drew these little sections that's going to help me figure out um, how to, or what the distance and what the angle is so I can cut some more support beams on this section here so that when you step here, there's still some support underneath this section. Now I'm probably going a little overkill on this, but I'm going to add some beams here so that when I drop the top piece on, I can screw into it and make it more secure in the top. So it's probably adding a lot of weight and unnecessary, but I really don't want this step to break when you go to step on it. So I actually recorded this part of the process earlier, but I'm going to show you how I decided to attach this step to the existing tile and how I went about figuring that out. Okay, we're back and I had gone to Lowe's and purchased some of these four masonry or tile drill bits. So they're specially designed to drill through the tile without breaking it. So my thought was to originally use these and drill a hole just through the tile, which I have a sample piece of tile here. So just through the tile and then not into the subfloor so that the lag bolt can go directly into the subfloor wood and not be damaged by the drill. Um, but I also found these and I was gonna give these a try on this sample tile piece that I have. It says, if I can focus, no pre-drilling required and that it goes through wood, and masonry, metal, drywall, and plastic. So if I can use these, then I don't need to drill a hole and do the whole lag bolt thing. I might be able to just use these. And these are that Power Pro 1 multi-material. So in theory, these should just do it. They're three inches long, and I've got 10 of them. So I've opened up my masonry, or my tile drill bits, I should say. And I'm going to do a test. I've installed the 1 quarter inch drill bit into my drill. And I've got a piece of wood that I'm going to set the tile on top of just so that I don't drill into my nice, um, what is this, a toolbox? Wow. Anyways, I'm going to drill a hole as a test and just to see. Now from videos I've seen of doing these things, um, we want to come in directly perpendicular to the tile. So I'm going to try to do that whilst filming here. Let's just see how it goes. I just want to give it a little test. I'm going to start out really slowly. See if I can focus. Just done some light pressure is all. Blow the dust out of the way there. So you've got a nice little hole. It's not very big, just a little quarter of an inch. I haven't gone all the way through, not even close, but in this first idea, it would have to go all the way through 
and I'd want to make the hole in the tile a little bit bigger than the screw that would be going into it. But let's uh, see if we can get a hole. Not all the way through just yet. So you can see if I can get find the hole. There it is. Not still not quite through yet, but it's done a really good job of not breaking the tile. So these are quite good little drill bits. I'm impressed. Okay, we're back with test two, and that's the screws that I showed earlier that supposedly don't require any pre-drilling. And it did come with a bit in that package. It's one of those star pattern bits to go with the actual specific screw itself. Oh, and I'm going to try to use my left hand to hold the video while I record this at the same time. I might have to start this just first before I can do that, but I did decide to use the impact drill for this drilling of this screw instead of my regular drill. So we'll be back after I start a test or a sort of pilot hole there. So using that same tile drill bit from before, I drilled a little hole first. And so let's try this again, see if it'll go through. <laughs> Having no success so far. Made a huge hole. Oh crap. So yeah, um, this doesn't really do what it says. As far as no pre-drilling required, definitely need to pre-drill in order to use these screws. So, wow, I'm mad. Here's my final example. The two by four through the tile into the subfloor. I think that looks and feels very secure. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep with those screws and just probably just do one each and so I'll have three screws that go into the floor, and then I'll use that liquid nails to further secure the step onto the tile. Okay, so this is my makeshift plan for when I go back upstairs and put the step on the tile. I have drilled a hole here, and I am now using the tile drill bit, which is the smallest of the four sizes, which is 5 16 and this fits through my little pilot hole just fine. And so I'm gonna shove the drill bit down and I will be able to start a hole in the tile just in the right space. And I don't have to worry about measuring or marking or having some kind of paint or something to show me where the hole should be. I'll be able to just start the hole in the tile with this and then make it a little wider before I drill the screw in through the subfloor. All right, so after lots of prep work and design, um, going back and forth, I think I've got what I want. And now I have it up here at the bathroom, um, right next to the tub, and I've made it even on the sides of the tub here. So I've got about 10 and a half inches from the tile to the edge of the step on both sides. And that's not including the baseboard there. It goes all the way out to the wall here. So now that I've got my measurements in the right place, I'm going to take my tile bit drill that I've shown earlier, that won't focus, will it? And I'm going to drill through those holes, as previously mentioned, down into the tile. So this is just going to make a mark on the tile where I can go back and take this step out and drill the bigger hole into the tile so that the screw will fit in. Here we go. So let's see where we're at. If I move this step over, I've got some holes started in the tile. I'm gonna go back with the bigger one and make those holes larger. Uh, 
right, so move from the 1 8 bit drill to the 3 16 drill bit. And again, these are the tile drill bits. I'm going to go slow. Got some smoke coming up. Steam coming off that hole there. Oh, here it is. So I'm not through all the way to the tile yet. Sorry, hard to do this with one hand. It's nice and toasty. So we're definitely smoking up a little bit. And yeah, that uh, drill bit, woo, yeah, it's pretty hot. So we're almost through, and I'll continue to do that through the other holes. With all three of my holes bored out down to the subfloor, I now will start to reassemble the step. And then as far as I can until I can go ahead and just screw those in with these specialty screws that we talked about earlier. Um, these really grab on, and I'm quite impressed with these. Um, though you can't drill straight into the tile with this, like we mentioned, but otherwise it's going to stay and um, it's going to hold that down really well. I'm also going to do some liquid nails on the back and maybe even on the bottom, just to make sure that this step is indeed as secure as possible. Before I put the liquid nails on and drill this to the floor, I've put my little support beams in. And I've also taken a four foot level and as it sits, I'm a little bit low, or a little bit uh, low on the left side. So when I put the top piece on and I put the second, um, whatever piece on, I'm gonna make sure that that's the level, but now I'm going to liquid nails and drill this into the floor. Now applying a generous amount of liquid nails to the bottom, and this will help it stay more secure. I want this to be as solid as possible. And so I'll do some beads of it here. I don't want it to um, come out the sides too uh, bad, but and I'm gonna fill the little hole as well. Sounds like I got a visitor. So I'm gonna apply this. And I'll also do a little bit on the part that'll attach to the tub, which is the back side here. And then I'm going to stop this portion of the video and flip it around and try to put it down as secure as possible without Grouping any of this liquid nails where I don't want it to be. Decided to put the screws in and have them poke out a little bit on the back side so I can line them up with the holes better. Let's see how that goes. And I'm going to put a piece of, or some caulking in there, some silicone so that it's, uh, water doesn't get down into it as well. So pre-doing the screws actually helped a lot. It was easy to just drop it on. I got a little bit of caulking in some places, but that's gonna be hidden anyways, so I'm not too worried about it. So now, drilling in the screws into the holes that I pre-drilled. Made this move a little bit. Let's start this one as well. Didn't move as much. Let's do this side again. That made the front pop up a little more than I'd like it to. Um, let's see what happens when I screw this one down too. Yeah, there's a little more gap than I'd like right here. You can hear it. See if I can't fix that, but otherwise, it is pretty dang secure in there. 
So what I ended up doing, you can hear, I no longer have that problem. Um, I eliminated the gap on the bottom. And all I did was tighten this thing down a lot more. You can see the screw went in a little further. That just um, made it even more solid. So this piece, I mean, it's not going anywhere. So those screws, I'm really quite impressed with them. So the next part is trying to get the second box piece to be level. But right now, I'm sitting pretty close. I mean, it's not exact, but when I install the other piece, I'll make sure to lift it up a little bit on the left side so that my platform is nice and level. I took my top box section apart so that I could get this back here and drill screws into that to secure it. I had to go in and cut these off because they were too long. And we are a little unlevel. Um, it's not ideal, but if I make it level by lifting the left, I stick up quite a bit. And it's not enough to notice, I don't think. Um, so I'm gonna try it without it being level, or I'm gonna go ahead and take this piece off and so I can drop that other side a little further. But it does sit flush right now because I cut that piece when it was in the garage. So it is a little bit unlevel. So I'm gonna figure out what to do about that. I might just leave it. Um, I don't think you'd be able to see it um, to the naked eye. Or I'll have the platform itself, the top piece, not sit um, as high or have it sit up a little bit higher on the side, not screw the nails in as far. I'll figure it out. But I took this apart so I could drill in from this side before I put this piece back on. And this, my friends, is a perfect example of why you should pre-drill holes rather than just trying to drive the screw into a piece of wood. So I brought up all the pieces from downstairs and I have my nice curved edge installed. And I have my top piece, which I think I'll have to recut because it didn't quite line up correctly once it's actually in the house. So there we go. I just need some tile. So we've gone ahead and added these support beams and cut them at an angle that matched the round of the front piece. This one cut really weird, but I just went with it because it scared me when I cut this piece and I didn't want to cut another one. But that should be a lot more structurally sound in the front, I'm hoping, especially at this piece is in the front. Here's my son to help me explain. Now, some of you might be wondering at this point why I didn't do like a two by eight instead of two separate boxes of two by fours. That's because I could not for the life of me find a straight two by eight piece or one that didn't have cracks on it. I looked at Home Depot on those and no one seemed to have ones that were straight. And so I went for this approach instead. So there we go. Next is to recut a new top piece that has the exact same measurements and roundness up against the tub and up against the front as well. I have my new top piece cut and I drew myself some guidelines so I can know where to drill some holes to keep the top down. But after I drill all the holes, I'm gonna take it back off and I'm going to, on the underside of the box here, so the top, I guess, put some caulking down. And then when this is reinstalled, I'll do some caulking here on the edges as well. And then I will do the mortar top. So I'm going to put a thin layer of mortar and let it dry to have it something to stick to. And then I'm going to install my tile mat on top of it, which hasn't arrived in the mail just yet, but hopefully I'll be ready to go when it comes. So as I mentioned, I put a layer of caulking in the back to try to prevent any water leakage in the future from getting to the wood here. And I will eventually caulk around the edges as well, even onto the floor. But on for now, I've put a layer of that liquid nails that I like to keep the top very secure and hopefully not creaky at all. Now, if anyone's used this liquid nail stuff, it is pretty rad. It um, holds a lot of weight and it really does stick wood to surfaces very well. So I recommend it when doing things like making shelves and in this case, making my little step. We are making progress. I've read and viewed online that it's not a good idea to put tile directly onto wood 
because wood expands and contracts differently than tile, obviously. So what I've gone with is this Schluter um, Dietra underlayment for the tile. And I've began cutting it to size to fit my step so that the tile will rest on top of this and the wood can move underneath it and expand and contract, but won't move the tiles themselves. So next will be to finish caulking and then lay down a layer of um, thin set. I'm gonna it, spread it very thin and let it harden so that the next layer of thin set has something better to attach to. And then that will be what this attaches to. And you need to rub it in with a rubber float and we'll get to that point. I'm now trying to see if this works. I'm going to add a thin layer of mortar onto my wood surface so that later when I attach the tile underlayment that it'll have a surface to stick to that's not the wood. Um, hopefully that's going to work. I'm not sure if it will, but this is what I'm going to try to do is spread a thin layer across this whole wood surface. I decided to just go for it and I put a layer of mortar on and I used the trowel edges to cut some grooves. Now I'm going to lay the tile underlayment on top and work it into the thin set by moving it back and forth and using this little rubber tile float to really push um, the underlayment so that we can get a good glue on it. All right, the tile underlayment's on and it's in there pretty secure. Gonna let it dry overnight, of course, just to make sure that it's really solid. And then the next part comes cutting the tile. All right, so I was able to borrow a tile cutter from an old high school friend and I've laid out my tile, dry fit, and I'm a little concerned about this one piece of tile as it rounds the edge here, but I think that it will work well. Now, I am not going to be doing a tiling video tutorial necessarily, but if you are making a step similar to this with the rounded edge, I just kind of took the length, which was 55 inches and a quarter, and I divided it, and I found that around six inches, just under six inches, with a quarter inch um, gap for grout all the way through would be a great fit and it would look um, pretty even. Now, it doesn't necessarily do so well on certain edge pieces here, like the back, I'm just pointing, where I'm gonna have to build up some of the mortar so that it'll stick better, but I think that this will work great. All right, I'm in the process of cutting tile and the pieces that go on top are considerably difficult to cut, especially trying to figure out the right angle. I have this leftover piece that I didn't use from earlier in the project and I was able to put a, I have a 13 by 13 tile, which is what I have on my floor, and lay it up and I can kind of draw my angle. And you can see I did that same thing for this side. It's, uh, the angle is pretty good. It took forever to cut that though. I had to do a, had to do? <laughs> I had to do a wet saw. And I tried a grinder, but it was just flipping off chunks of tile. And so with a lot of, a lot of effort, I was able to cut that line. But this little template here that I had from before helps. So if you're doing the same project or doing something similar, um, you might cut another top piece before you get to the part of doing tile because it will make cutting that um, much easier. And then of course you just cut the back off um, and so it'll fit in the area. But I've got my angle that I need. It's pretty close. Um, I'm not going to try to get exact or I'm going to, I'm going to probably, you know, I can't talk. I wanted to say kill myself, but that's not good. Well, I don't recommend trying to cut tile that's got a curve to it on a wet saw. I actually blew this thing up. The motor doesn't even work anymore. It's my father-in-law's, so I'm gonna have to buy him a new one. So what's been working, it's not the best. Um, you still get little jagged edges, but I've got a Dremel tool and I'm kind of just scoring the edge along my um, line that I drew earlier upstairs. And then I come through back with a um, diamond cut blade on my grinder and come in at an angle to, so I don't try to ruin the edge. But that's what I had to do here. It works. It's not great. 
Um, but there's really not a better solution that I know of to cut these strange curves, especially for those bigger tile pieces. But that's just an idea if you're, again, doing this yourself. So I just have a random Dremel tool bit head. Um, you can get different kinds, but this one worked for me. Just about done. I have all my tile pieces cut and I'm putting the thin set on top and I will back butter the tiles and that will be done for the tiles. And then the only other thing would be to put on the grout after this is set. I have some pre-mixed grout because the last time I did grout, I royally messed it up and I wasted so much um, grout because I just wasn't mixing it correctly. So I thought that this time I would save some time and just get the premix kind. I believe this kind has some coat or some sealant in it so that I wouldn't have to seal the tiles. But I have for the stone tiles, I have, where'd it go? Back here, just some grout sealer. And I put it on already on the top. And I do that before I put the grout on and then I'll do it after I put the grout on. And that's just still in these stone tiles. The other tiles are porcelain, so you don't have to worry about any of that. But I've used this tile, stone, and grout sealer. And I just picked this up at a um, Florida decor store. They've got quite a lot of stuff for doing tiling. So almost done in the home stretch. Well, there we are. We have completed the project. Sorry that this is a long video, but it goes through detail showing my ups and downs and my woes and hopefully this will help you if you're doing a similar project. Thank you.